estate planning is defined as the process of anticipating and arranging for the disposal of an estate. Estate planning typically attempts to eliminate uncertainties over the administration of a probate and maximize the value of the estate by reducing taxes and other expenses. Now joining me in studio for an in-depth discussion on estate planning is Andrew Wellstead, the Director of the Tax Division at Denise Rates and Angelique Fissett, Head of Trust Services from f and A very warm welcome to both of you. That intro, relatively complex to the layperson out there. Angelique, let's start off with you. Let's take a step back and say, what is estate planning for the average person out there? And tell us what the current trends are that we've been seeing. Well, I would say from an estate planning point of view, a person needs to align your personal circumstances with your financial affairs. Because we often so find, you know, people don't understand the differences between marriage regimes. For instance, we married in, com um, in community or property, what the consequences are. And um, that could have severe consequences in the event of death, because you could bequeath in terms of your will certain assets, and in fact your spouse has got a half share of that fixed property that you're bequeathing to a third party. So from an estate planning point of view, there's really a lot of consequences or things that you need to take into cognizance before just you know drafting a will. And another thing you need to take into cognizance of is the fact that there's also a tax implication with estate planning. Uh, tell us a little bit about the scenario that we're looking at in South Africa. Absolutely. Look, unfortunately death has tax consequences as with everything else in life. And um, when you die, you deem to dispose of your assets and that incurs capital gains tax. And thereafter, there's an estate duty of 20% on the assets that devolve upon your heirs. Now, one of the important aspects of estate planning is an attempt to legitimately reduce that um, death tax to make sure that your heirs receive as much as possible to look after them going forward. Mm. So this is what we're looking at. Let's take it back, a flat rate of 20% on all property of residents and South African property of non-residents. A basic deduction of 3.5 million rand is allowed in the determination of an estate's liability for estate duty. And you're also talking about capital gains tax. Is that all the numbers that we need to focus on when uh, taking uh, estate planning seriously? Those are the major numbers. There's, there's the disposal by the, dis or the deemed disposal by the deceased for capital gains tax purposes and then the estate calculates its dutiable amount for estate duty purposes and there's a 20% leakage there as you said. Okay, well let's just take a look at tax avoidance. I know that it perhaps a, a term that has got a bad stigma attached to it as well, but how can you avoid some of these numbers if at all? I mean obviously uh, we can look at capital gains tax as an example. Well tax avoidance is perfectly legitimate. It, it's, it's planning within the law that allows you to avoid certain taxes that you otherwise may have incurred. Um, an example is getting moving, estate, moving assets that are out of your estate, particularly when they're low in value and they're growth assets. That makes sure that any growth in the assets um, is not subject to estate duties. For, so for example, a commonly used structure is a trust. You can set up a trust, divest yourself of certain assets that you think will increase in value, and then that increase in the value will not fall, form part of your estate for CGT purposes or estate duty mm. purposes in future. And of course you focus on the trust perspective as well. Tell us about the changes that we have seen in tandem with the capital gains tax laws in South Africa. Okay, well into, at the moment people have got um, until the end of next year, 31st of December 2012, to transfer fixed properties back into their personal capacities. The only change that we've now seen is that it has to be terminated um, terminated, especially if it's a trust or a closed corporation or a, a company, because one of the reasons for that was apparently that there's been all these dormant structures and it's to kind of clean up and ensure that those properties are then transferred back. So in those instances, no taxes will be paid, but obviously transfer costs will be paid to the conveyancer. So in other words, when you, when you are invested in property quite heavily and you are looking at estate planning and uh, looking at the trust aspect as well, it is very vital that you do get your facts right in, in terms of what you could land up paying out at the end of it all. That's right, but a person also needs to be cautious because maybe it's not a bad idea to retain that property in the fix or in the trust because, I mean, it, if it's a property that you're going to keep there for a long term and it's going to be for the benefit of your um, family, then it may not ne be necessary for you to transfer. So a person really, when you do estate planning, needs to look at all the facts and then consider and give recommendations based on that and not just only on one kind of principle because of its uh, tax plan. You're talking about protecting your property. What about protecting your property and your assets when uh, getting married? Look, absolutely, that's, that's the first stage of estate planning. You have to choose a marital regime, and that will determine how your assets are shared on divorce or death. I think an important thing that was said there and must be stressed that tax is not the only driving factor behind estate planning. 
For example, you may want to put your assets into a trust for asset protection purposes so that if you're an entrepreneur and things go badly, creditors can't attach those assets, like the family mm -hmm. home, for example. But yes, the first, the first point of estate planning is an, is an anti-nuptial contract if your life follows the ordinary course. And that, that is an important step in deciding how your assets will be shared on death or divorce. And thereafter, making sure that your will matches your ANC and your circumstances, as was said earlier, is also very important. Mm. Which uh, marriage contract is the most popular in South Africa at this point in time, from what you've seen passing through your hands? I would say in community property is still the most one used at the mo at the moment and I really don't understand because from a financial planning point of view anti-natural contract is definitely the better route to go because um, when you married out of community of property you do deal with two separate estates and when you're in community of property both the assets are frozen and it really is to the inconvenience of the surviving spouse because he or she cannot deal with his assets whilst the estate is under administration mm -hmm. so you know despite that there's still a lot of Interesting trend. What could go wrong? I mean, from a tax perspective as well, and when you do see marriages going wrong and the state side of things are not planned properly, I'm sure you've had interesting cases passing through your hands as well. No, you, you absolutely see it more often than you would like to. Um, some of some of the important things, about, one, the important thing about estate planning is obviously your will. That's the most important instrument, and that needs to be um, carefully drafted and thought out for a number of reasons. One is, as you say, to make sure that there's not a long freezing of the estate so that your heirs who rely on you can't get at those assets. You need to appoint an executor so that it's clear the court doesn't have to intervene and appoint, appoint an executor on your behalf. So there are a number of factors that need to be taken into account when estate planning and there are a number of good reasons for doing it, tax being merely one. Mm. Let's take a, a step back as well and say, well, uh, you know, unfortunately this person or you know, one of your relatives did not have an estate. Uh, are we going to see an executor put in place on your behalf? What happens to the assets liabilities of a person? Normally the family members would nominate one of the beneficiaries or one of the children or a spouse as the um, executor and those documents will be lodged with the master of the high court and then the master would ask that someone assist this person to administer the estate because there's a process that needs to be followed and you need to understand all the various tax implications. Mm -hmm. So once somebody that is able to administer an estate um, assist this person, the master would appoint. Are the tax implications are the same for this kind of scenario? The tax mm -hmm. implications are largely the same. It's the CGT on death and then the estate duty. Mm -hmm. But obviously what you put in place before that happens is key in minimizing those taxes. Let's uh, look at the year ahead. What are the big trends that you're going to be seeing going forward? And what are, what are some of the advice that you're giving to clients out there? Well, look, assets are in general depressed. They have a low value, which means it's a good time if they are growth assets to move them into something like a trust. Um, that is a good estate planning tool because when you die, those assets that are in the trust no longer form part of your estate. There's no CGT and there's no estate duty. So if you do have an asset that's underwater or lower than what you would imagine it should be worth, then now is a good time to think about externalizing that asset from your estate. Mm -hmm. um, other, unfortunately, when times are tough, people are struggling to keep their heads above water and not focusing on estate planning enough. And it needs to be something that people need to do frequently to make sure that what they have put in place uh, from an estate and succession planning perspective is current and matches their facts. Mm. Angelique, do you concur with those points? Definitely. And, definitely. and also just a, a touch on perhaps the dilution of estates uh, because of financial troubles. Um, well, I think what a person needs to look at is liquidity because that's one of the problems that we do have at the moment is um, there's a lot of cash shortfalls and it's just a question of people most probably not reviewing their estate plans enough to ensure that there's sufficient cash in their estate or ultimately they don't understand what the consequences are or what kind of cost they're going to be in the event of death. So um, from that point of view, a person does need to review very often to make sure there's liquidity. Fantastic. Thank you so much to both of you for joining me today. Much appreciated.